I come when it gets 
one of my favorite stories in scripture is, is when Peter is sinking in the water, there's a storm raging, and Peter steps out and begins to sink. I think, why doesn't God, why doesn't Jesus just calm the storm before Peter gets out? Why doesn't he make it easy so that when Peter gets out of the water, it'll be perfect for him? I said, no, that's not how God works. That the storm is raging, the water is falling, the, the waves are crashing, and Jesus is there right beside you. And he says, I am with you in the midst of the chaos. At the moment that you think you're kind of, that's where God already is. And this was the good news for the first Christians. You imagine the first Christians, right? They, they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They're being persecuted by the neighbors. They're being pushed out of their own society. And then within their lifetime, the society is turned on its head. The Roman armies come in and attack Jerusalem and destroy it. Homes are burned. The temple is destroyed and ripped down. People are massacred. And so people flee. And now not only is, is my faith is hurt, that everything is wrong. The world has come to an end. Within 30 years of Jesus, these people are saying the world has come to an end. And my family has been killed. My home has been destroyed. And now I'm wandering as a refugee, as an immigrant, searching for something, anything. And they found comfort in these small groups. They found comfort going to one another's homes, sharing food together, and sharing the stories of this man Jesus. And they wrote letters to each other to encourage one another. And they didn't have to be told that it was bad times. They knew it was bad times. Their life told them that it was the worst times. And it was even worse because they were now being persecuted. Because many of these early Christians would be arrested and tortured, and even killed. And yet, when they read the story of Jesus, they found good news. They didn't come from, it's not easy news, it's not simple news. They found good news that even at the worst times that God was there, even in the moment when the world seemed to come to an end, they found good news in that Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, was with them. He said, I am with you always. And sometimes that's what we need. Sometimes we need someone to remind us. Sometimes we need to be fed the hard news. Even when we don't like it. Even when, when we don't want it. We need to be fed the hard news because it's good for us. So when my father was sick, he had cancer. But I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. What was going on? I was taken to get chemo. I was taken to the nurse for the journey. Everything is fine. Don't worry. These are the best doctors. Don't worry. We have everything under control. He's getting the very best treatment. But I didn't understand what was happening. And so I was going with this also until finally I got the doctor and told me, this is the end. These are end times. We're going to go again, but there is no solution. And the end is coming, and he will die. And it wasn't good news for me. It wasn't bad news for me. But it's what I needed to hear so I could begin to grieve and process and talk to him about it. So that we could begin sharing our experience together and even explore in these worst times, where is God? And we could share that moment together before we <coughs> I think the role of the church is sometimes to push us into those dark places. I think that's the role of the church is sometimes to create a sacred space. And what we want, what we prefer, what we create for ourselves is a safe space. You know, it's an interesting thing. We create the same spaces for ourselves. We created, like right now, there's this cacophony of noise, this unending noise on social media, on the news, on television, on, on everywhere you turn. There's just voices of opinions and punditry. Everybody. And they divide themselves into these spaces, these safe spaces, where I'm going to go to social media and hear other people who have opinions just like mine. I'm going to watch the news that agrees with my worldview. And so if I'm a Democrat, maybe I turn on CNN. Or if I'm a conservative, maybe I turn on Fox News. And I hear people who are saying the things that I already agree with. We've created for ourselves these retreats where we can go back and hear other people confirm what we already believe. It's a safe space. But we're not called at the church to be the purveyors of safe spaces. We're called to be the purveyors of a safe space where we can share the truth. Now there's 60 days, just under 60 days, until midterm elections. And people say, it shouldn't be political in the church, it shouldn't be political.
we shouldn't preach politics. But the reality is these politics affect every aspect of our life. It affects the way we walk out the door in the streets that are made under our feet. It affects the way we live as a society and we order ourselves. And if every aspect of our life has something touching politics, then it's not just political, it's theological. If we're talking about the way we order our day, our children's lives, our futures, in the very society we live in, then inherently we're talking about the way God is calling us to order our society. So it's not political, it's theological. And it's not for the next 60 days when we're going to have these conversations. It's for the next 60 years. It's for the next 600 years that as Christians were called to stand up and proclaim the good news even at the worst times, even when it's the thing that you want to hear peace. And so we need to talk about these heavy things. We need to talk about immigration. What, no matter what side you agree on, we need to talk about children who are being separated, children who are being, who, be, being reunited. We need to talk about the Me movement, the way we live with women in our society and value the path of the planet. We need to talk about people who take a knee on a field on Sundays, whether you agree with it or not. We need to talk about the Black Lives Matter movement because it's this omnipresent reality for our life today. And if we don't talk about it, then we'll put our heads in the sand and we're we'll retreating to our safe space when God is calling us to create a sacred space where we can share our thoughts, our opinions, where we can be challenged and even be disturbed. And maybe that means here in the sermon we're having a Bible study with opinions that we don't care for, that move us and pull us, and that's good because we're searching for the places that are broken. Because we're searching to have conversations not about our politics, but about our God. And we're talking about the places in society that are, are not okay. And we need to have those important conversations together. We need to sometimes put on our big board panties and have the tough conversations that we don't like, that we'd rather have put all together. Because it's those broken places in society where God already is well. It's those broken places where people are actively suffering, where God is already waiting. So it's our job to have new conversations, holy conversations, ones that tug and pull and challenge us because we're in the pursuit of God, because we're in the pursuit of a safe space, we're in the pursuit of a safe space.